Welcome to my little home office, previously a guest bedroom in Rexburg, Idaho. And uh, at the request of the wonderful ladies over at Fem Power, I'm just going to film um, working on some of my two wire reeds. I have a bunch that I did yesterday. And you can learn about the whole process from start to finish over at bassoonwithaview.com and then my Sister Crawford YouTube channel. But you'll find these reeds, um, you don't have to form the tube and let it sit for, for several weeks. So, um, yeah, you can make reeds really quickly. You can use any shape and profile that you're currently using. So do this with whatever cane you have. Um, there are a few unique tools to this process, but thanks to Aaron Oft, who was able to do some research. This is one of the special, this is a special forming mandrel. You can also, this is called a, a nail punch. That's my water boiler going. So you can use one of these, which you can get from your hardware store, which is currently open in the pandemic to replace this. And then there's a forming mandrel, but honestly, it's, I'm sure different, but you'll, you can approximate it closely enough. Um, that's the other kind of unique tool, a larger flat file, but just use, if you just have your little rat tail files, they'll be totally fine for this process. Now I do want to say something about this 24, ga uh, 24 gauge wire that comes from, um, Leahy wire. It's really fantastic and it never, ever seems to snap. I highly recommend it. Again, that information is over at the website as well. So you can find that. Okay. So we're just going to jump in here. And again, let me just say a huge shout out to uh, Aaron Oft and Sean Seguin, who have helped organize our thoughts after we learned it from um, Giorgio. I have kind of altered the process a little bit, even from the directions I have online. And you'll see it. I'm going to grab some Barton Cane because I know a lot of us use Barton Cane. I won't use my own um, shaped profile, GSP cane, gauge shaped profile cane. So this is Daryl Hale cane. I love this shape and profile. Love it, love it, love it. I've been using it on a Fox 201 and a Moosman 150 E Deluxe. And it works great on both instruments. It's just awesome cane. Um, okay. So here's the first thing is that we need to bevel it. And this is the process by which we bevel this. You're gonna take your flat file and the cane itself. And there's an actual, I think, measurement for this angle. But going at an angle, we're gonna bevel the entire length of the tube. And there we go. There, hopefully you can see that angle. Oh, there's my camera. It's really hard to see this stuff, but there's better pictures of it on the website, but that's the, the motion. You're just turning it at an angle like that to get the angle for the bevel. And I usually do essentially four passes. Now, one thing about the barn cane is that all of the cane, at least all the cane that I've ever ordered from barn, does have this little flare at the bottom. Um, when I shape my own cane, it's always just straight, but they've come together just fine. So my point is, don't worry about it. I haven't had any problems with sealing. This can take a few times to get used to it. It's, it's kind of an awkward motion. It's not what we're used to doing. So just be patient with yourself. Yeah, those are nice angles. There we go. Again, probably really hard to see, but that's what we're going for there. Okay, so I'm gonna do that to each of these, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it in the water. Um, we were warned that we over soak cane too much. And so it's nice. I live in a very, very dry area of the country. So you don't need to like soak the heck out of this cane to get this process to work. But I am going to just throw it over in my water.
Okay, so that's done. Pretty straightforward. Nothing incredibly new there. I'm sure we've all tried beveling many different ways. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward. So now I'm gonna pluck one out of the water and fold it over. Okay, now um, I've been cutting these tubes at 27 millimeters. And so this is a little guide, but you can also just measure and cut. This style of reed making has made me think a lot about the ratio of tube length to blade length. And I don't have any specific axioms at this point, like what it should be. And I, I imagine someone has written about this somewhere. I just haven't researched it. But I will just say, in general, I'm finding that a tube that is shorter than the blade seems to make a much freer reed, which makes sense because proportionally more of the reed is vibrating. Thus, it's a more vibrant reed. But for such a long time, I've played with, I guess, quite a long tube. They didn't seem uh, extraordinarily long. They seemed, you know, an average length. But I do really think um, that... that having a greater proportion of the reed vibrating just makes a more vibrant reed. Like it seems like an obvious statement <laughs> when you say it out loud. And yet I've played with very long tubes for such a long time, so. And obviously you can set up your profiling machine to make a shorter tube as well. We've done that in our read room here at uh, BYU Idaho. So they're coming off the profiler at the, at the correct length now. Okay, so next. The wire, top wire, we're gonna place the top wire. Um, when we learned this method, uh, Georgia was very specific about the amount of pressure we use to wrap this, I don't know that I've ever been able to quite uh, reenact perfectly or recreate perfectly his pressure, but the point is it's going to be snug. So wrap it snug. And it's a, it's a triple wrap. And it just makes it... Where is my... Oh. Um, it definitely just holds the shape a lot better. You're probably wondering with a two-wire reed... What do you do about your wire adjustments? And you're going to find that um, you just you will make much fewer wire adjustments and the, the wire adjustments that you make to the top wire will hold better. And you can still make um, adjustments of the tube underneath that first wire. But in general, you just you're not going to be micromanaging your wires nearly as much. At least that has been my experience. And of course, uh, Anyone else who's been using this method can chime in and, and share their thoughts. But these are not uh, incredibly challenging reads to make. They're very forgiving. And they just, oh, they're just really fantastic. I've been on these reads for a year now, and I, I am hard-pressed to imagine a time that I will ever go back to a three-wire read. Okay, so get that on there nice and snug. And push it up right up, basically close to that collar as you can reasonably get. Okay. Now we're going to do the scoring. Now this Barton cane is already scored, and that's okay. I've done this countless times now. I'm going to rescore this Barton cane in the manner that we were taught. So this is going to feel a little dangerous, but you're going to be fine. Now, this is where <clears throat> I stray from the directions I have on the website. I've just recently started doing this, and it seems to work fine. Um, okay, so initially, you would want to do two cuts on each side. You would subdivide this into three sections and do two cuts here, two cuts on the two outside sections. But I've just been doing basically straight across at this point and it seems to work just fine so i'm gonna and i'm not even gonna follow the barton scores i just i've just been eyeing it <laughs> so maybe that's really frustrating but 
you know, my experience, the more scores you can get in there, the better, right? Because we're just trying to relieve all that pressure of cracking up into the blade. This actually feels a little. And so you just want, you don't have to push your knife all the way up. You just want it to travel up pretty far though. Okay, there we go. So how many did I do? One, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like I actually did seven scores and that's fine. I'm gonna dip that again. Okay, so now we get to use the fun forming mandrel. You can use your um, nail stamp. I feel like I'm using the wrong word for this. And I guess I could open up my own website and look at it, but I'm keeping check on emails from students. So, okay, so forming mandrel. We're gonna go ahead and I was always taught to press down onto mandrels. We were taught to twist in. And so I'm gonna, I've been doing that. So we're gonna twist in. Okay, you can see all those beautiful scores. Look at that, isn't that lovely? And then immediately we're going to tighten this top wire. Now this might actually have strayed from the original method that we were taught, but I'm just doing what I have found works really, really well within these kind of new principles or newly packaged principles, newly packaged traditional principles. I don't know, however you wanna say it. Okay, good. So I give this, get this pretty snug. Now, of course, as with any top wire, you want it to be snug without collapsing the cane on the sides, right? We don't wanna over tighten it because then we destroy vibration. This whole read is all about fantastic amounts of vibration. That looks great, happy with it, okay? So I'm just gonna twist it back off. Now I'm gonna twist on my basically holding mandrel, essentially, but there is this line. So put it onto there. And now we're gonna do the next wire. Same manner, do it quite snug. It is six millimeters from the butt of the reed. So that's gonna feel probably for many of us quite high. It's going to be just fine. There we go. Um, I'm not going to measure it because I feel confident about my placement. <laughs> I'm sure you're like, God, does this woman do anything with attention to detail? Well, I do. I've also made a ton of these. And again, these are very forgiving reads. My gosh, they're just wonderfully vibrant. Makes it so easy. Okay, so let's get that wire pretty snug now though. You could re uh, tighten that top wire a little bit more, but this is, a, this is the point at which you can get really in, in trouble with that top wire, so don't be crazy. Go ahead and uh, crimp the tube. You should be really safe. These reeds just don't seem to crack into the blade. If you've done that top wire correctly and the scoring correctly, they really just don't crack into the blade, which is super fantastic. Again, crimp some more. Oh, now I'm second guessing myself. I am gonna uh, measure to see where I put this bottom wire, see if I got six millimeters in there. And you'll see on the website instructions, you're gonna measure from the bottom of the wire, not from the middle of the wire, which is probably what many of us do typically. Let's see how, oh man. I mean, come on guys, shoot. <laughs> when you're good, you're good. Okay, and then that's it, that's that's it. Now, you're gonna let this uh, read dry for like, well, I live in Idaho, so I'm gonna let it dry overnight. And then tomorrow, I can wrap the bottom and cut the tip and start finishing it. Okay, so I've selected, so these reads I made yesterday, these blanks I made yesterday. Um, this is Chris Lieb, gouge shaped profiled here. And this is, this is Daryl Hale, which is Barton Kane. And then this is Fox One, gouge shaped and profiled here. Um, we're going to put these reads on the forming mandrel and you're going to tighten this bottom wire about 10 millimeters from this line. Don't get too crazy about it. Just make sure it's nice and tight so you have a nice seal. And you can eye that. You can see if the, if the sides have been sealed or not.
I have honestly struggled to get these to tighten exactly 10 milliliters up from this marking, um, the Andante Rondo um, mandrel. But as long as you see it's sealed and come together, you're going to be just fine because you're going to end up. And then I'm going to wrap this the way I always wrap it with um, thread. You can use not you, you you can use whatever one. You can use shrink wrap, hot glue, cotton, nylon. It doesn't matter. Just do whatever you normally do. I'm going to use actually since I have three different shapes right here, I'm going to end up using three different colors. What I'm doing now is um, a single strand double wrap, which is really fun. It always looks cool, but you end up wasting a lot of thread unless you're <clears throat> very fastidious with the exact amount of length you need. So I used to do this all the time. I do it a lot less now. My students <laughs> are much better at wrapping reeds than I do. They come in with these really gorgeous wraps. And honestly, they've clearly taught themselves because I haven't taught them to wrap that beautifully. I thought I was recording and I wasn't. Sad day. Okay, but all I did was I reamed, I uh, cut off the little tails from the wrap, and I put down the wires. You haven't missed anything else. Uh, I was saying, however, that the Chris Lieb and the Fox have come off my gouger and profiler, and so I have them set up so I can pretty much clip the tip, and they're like very, very close to finish. The Barton King will take a little bit more work, but it's still pretty vibrant. So in general, these are going to be longer and thicker reeds when you finish them. 